On the first day of Vlogmas, Jenny gave to me a fun way to ditch the passy. Happy December, everybody. I am so excited to start my Vlogmas series or my 12 days of Vlogmas. And the first one is actually going to be all about how to ditch the passy in a fun way. If you're new here, hello and welcome. My name is Ginny. I am a teacher, doctoral student, and a mom to two girls, Alice and Mina, who you can see right here. And in this video, like I said, I am going to cover the way that I've found to be best to ditch the passy if you have a toddler that is still clinging on to that passy. So first thing I wanted to mention too is that there is a reason why you kind of want to get separated from that passy and that's largely because of their teeth. So when you take your child to the first pediatric dentist visit, they'll probably let you know that you really should be phasing out the passy after your child turns one or two dependent. Alice actually, we had managed to get her all the way down to just having the passy during nap and sleep. So our goal was really to just get rid of the passy and I didn't feel great about going just full cold turkey because Alice was very attached to it and my bleeding heart just I wanted to find a slightly better way with slightly less tears. So step one of this was I actually prepped Alice for several days leading up to when we were going to take the passy away. I didn't tell her we're gonna take the passy away. I actually told her about the passy fairy. Alice, today we're gonna mail all the passies to the passy fairy, okay? And I said, oh, Alice, on Friday, the Passy Fairy is going to come, so we have to box up all your Passies and send them off to the Passy Fairy for new babies to have. The reason why I did this is because I did not want it to be some horrific surprise. I wanted to give her time to kind of process that internally. And when you have a child that's older than two, they generally can understand a little bit more of what you're talking about. The next step in this process in order to make sure that my child was actually invested in it herself and felt like she had some control over the situation was I actually had Alice go around the house and help me take the passies and put them into a little box. Alice, we have to put them in the mail. Can you put all of your passies in the mail bag? Thank you. Okay, now it goes in the mail bag. Thank you. Passy, can you put it in the mail bag? Good job! Once she put them into the box, we sealed up the box and I let her hold my hand as we walked out to the mailbox to send the box to the Passy Fairy. We have to put the Passies in the mailbox. Good job! Close the mailbox. Okay, Alice. Like I said, the reason why I did this is because I wanted her to have a sense of ownership over it and a sense of feeling of control over it. So it wasn't just, mama took the passy or the passies are gone forever. It's a, well, the passy fairy took the passies and gave them to other babies that need them. Once we mailed off the passies and we said bye bye to them, I let Alice know that I heard that the passy fairy will bring her a present after her first sleep with no passy. I will tell you transparently that that first sleep was hard for her and she did cry a bit, but I do also think that she cried less than she would have if I just took it cold turkey. So after some tears, when she finally fell asleep and I went in and comforted her, I reminded her that, you know, the Passy Fairy is gonna receive them and the, the little kids that are gonna get them are so happy and they're so thankful to you, Alice. You've done such a kind thing for them. Once she woke up and she realized she had taken a nap, I said, Alice, guess what? The Passy Fairy came and brought you a present. Oh. <gasps> What's in there for Alice? Did the Passy Fairy bring you a present? So what I decided to do for the present, I actually decided to buy for her two different things that have to do with sleep. My focus of that was to have her have almost like two replacement comfort items that are more age appropriate. So I bought her a new sleep sack that is this sleep sack right here. This is a little sleepy sleep sack and their 18 to 36 month size is humongous. It's really long and since Alice is petite, it's the perfect size for her. And I got the one that has Jessie's design on it because Alice loves Jessie, she loves Toy Story. So I thought that would be a great thing for her to have in there. But of course, I wanted to have some fun stuff too. So I had in there the sleep sack, so associated with sleep. I also had in there a new coloring book with Disney princesses, something she could physically go ahead and do, something that she could actually touch and manipulate and have a real connection to just something fun. The last thing that I put in the box was a new stuffy that she seems to really like. 
and the stuffy is also associated with all of the different Disney stuff that we do. Um, so I decided to get her a stuffy of Marie from the Aristocats. So here's the Marie stuffy that I got Alice. I actually put Marie in there and she has her big pretty bow and I said, oh Alice, the Passy Fairy sent you a new kitten to sleep with you. Her name is Marie. So she actually had Marie that she could sleep with too. So instead of just feeling that, you know, sense of void and you know, it is because it's all they've known for their whole life. She has something new to comfort her and hold at night when she is feeling those pangs of sadness without having this passy. I will tell you that for the next few nights, she definitely did struggle a little bit with sleeping because it, it's an adjustment. It's going to be an adjustment. But what I found is when I would go in to check on her, um, she would say, the passy fairy took the passies. They went to new babies. So she, she knew why they were gone and she knew where they went, but there was just, you know, that sense of like a wistfulness with her. Like she knew they were gone, but it was still a sad feeling for her, but she knew they were where they needed to be. So this whole process took maybe three days and we had tried going cold turkey with the passy before and that was a disaster. We had also tried going with the passies, I'll put a picture over here of the ones we tried, the ones where they actually kind of sized down and that didn't work either. Alice did not care if there was nothing but a teeny tiny little nub. She would still hold it in her mouth for dear life to the point where she was winding up getting rashes around her mouth sometimes, um, just trying to hold on to the passy when they had the tiny little nub. So we decided we wanted to do kind of like a modified cold turkey but with slightly less tears. <laughs> all in all this process was fantastic and I'm so grateful that we did it. It's a big change for Alice but it was one that was positive and I don't think she's gonna look back on losing the passy as a real sense of loss and profound sadness because we tried at least to give her a connection to the process and also let her know that what she did was something that was good and generous and it made other people happy. So I hope day one of Vlogmas was helpful for you and you got some tips on how to ditch that passy because it can be very challenging. If this doesn't work for you, and it might not, just know that there's lots of other ways that you can try and I feel for you because it is hard to get rid of that passy. Do it step by step if you need to. Know that there probably will be some tears at some point, but let your child know that they're being heard and you understand them and you those feelings are valid. Day two, which is tomorrow, is actually going to be all about my favorite apps for toddlers, so I hope you will check it out tomorrow. And thank you so much for stopping by to Vlogmas Day One. Take care.